Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. If you are new here then my name is Estric and I'm here to help you to get to grips with those most challenging topics in biology, improve your study skills, technique and also to help you to get the grades that you deserve. Now in today's video I'm aiming it at anyone who's just done their summer exams for year 12 and they've got one more year to go and they're thinking what should I do over the summer? So I'm going to pick out four key things that will help you over the summer to maximise your start in year 13. Now the first thing I'm going to say isn't actually one of the four that I'm going to recommend but it is so essential that you don't forget the summer holidays is about rest, relaxing and have some fun as well because year 13 is a tough year, it's full on, you need to have a break. So although I'm going to be saying four key things to help you maximise your summer to help with year 13, please make sure you also plan in lots of rest and a chance to have some fun as well. Okay, let's get into it. So the very first thing that you should do if you haven't already done this is for your summer exams that you might have done within school, you might call them mock summer exams, end of unit assessments, who knows. But what you should do is analyse your exam and use something called marks analysis. And if you've never done this before, then I'll link up here a video that I've got that you can watch on how to analyse your exams. But just in short, the marks analysis, what you do is you go through your test with the mark scheme and every time you lose a mark, you have to say what the skill was. So the M stands for maths. A is application, R is reading, C is clarity of answer, K is knowledge and S is statements per question. So you have a look through, every time you've lost a mark you tally it and then at the end you see which skill did you have the most tallies for and that should help you to be able to identify is there a particular skill that you are weaker at and therefore that's what to focus on over the summer. Now that leads me straight into number two, what to do to maximise your summer in terms of working. Um, the second one is come up with a SMART target. It seems I'm full of acronyms in today's video, that does happen a lot in teaching. So a SMART target, the S stands for specific, M is measurable, A is achievable, R is realistic and T is time specified. So basically thinking about which skill you identified as the one that you lost the most marks on and therefore probably the skill you're weakest at and you need to focus on, we come up with a SMART target. So a specific activity that we can realistically measure that you have done, it is something that you can actually achieve and the time specified is the summer holidays. So the sorts of things you might set are, if it was application questions, number one, you could say, I watched Miss Estrick's video on application questions, so you can find out. In that video, I go through strategies of how to revise the application questions, but then also when you do them, what strategies to put in place. So watch the video, then you could say, have a go at Miss Estrick's application booklet of questions, highlight the key terms as you go, and then review with the mark scheme. So you might want to specify how many questions, but if it's the summer holidays, realistically, you would be able to finish the whole booklet, but not for the year 13 topics. So that's the sort of thing we mean by a smart target. You do have to specify an exact activity that you're going to do and it might be a few multiple activities that are going to address that weak point. So we don't just say practice more questions or practice more application questions, you have like a direction to it. So like I said, watch the video, find out what the strategies are, apply those strategies to the questions, practice, learn from the mark scheme as well, the key marking points, you could always list those down and see if that helps you to improve. Now that actually takes me on to point number three, which is being aware of all the resources that are out there. Now I'm just gonna focus on some of the key resources that I have that you may or may not be aware of that will really help you with any smart targets you might have set. So I do have a whole range of YouTube playlists aside from the theory ones. So I've got my exam techniques. So any of those skills that you identified, I actually have videos on all of them. So go to the exam techniques playlist and find one that is relevant for you. I also have for free on my website, you can download the range of skills booklets. So I think it's called the um, skills assessment bundle. So it's completely free and the questions are sorted into booklets according to which skill it is. And again, it links to the skills in the marks analysis. 
Now, if it's more knowledge, that was the skill that you lost the most marks on, then you might be better off downloading my topic assessment bundle. I think it's called that. Uh, but it's got all of the topics, one to eight, some of the hardest questions that have ever come up. And if you're on year 12, then have a go at the topics one to four, because those are the ones that you've done already. Now, if you're looking for even more support than that, because maybe you've realized the revision notes you have aren't sufficient, you hadn't correctly highlighted the key terms, or as we're moving towards the essay, you're not completely sure, then I do have my full set of A-level notes as well, which are actually in the process of being revamped and improved, and they're gonna be re-released again in August. So look out for those. You're gonna have the new edition in August for AQA, and also for OCR, that'll be coming in August as well. And the last thing that might really help is my active recall workbook. So if you have identified as a particular topic, then this would be perfect for you because I've got topics one to four, if you want to just buy the year 12 one, or I've got one to eight if you buy the full A level. And it's a mix of really short answer questions or um, different activities like labeling the diagram, comparison tables, which are there to test your knowledge and help to improve your long-term memory of the topics. And then my final tip for how you can have a really productive year 12 summer, as well as the rest, I'm gonna keep in mind you, don't forget you have to have some rest, fun, relaxation as well. But another thing to be really productive and to help you when you start year 13 is use this summer to prepare for any university applications. So really, I'd recommend having your personal statement written this summer holidays. And if you're not really sure where to start, I've got a video on it, so check that out up here, how to write a science-based personal statement, but you can apply it to other topics. Now, a lot of courses, if they're vocational ones, like dentistry, medicine, veterinary science, will be after work experience. So use this summer to try and gain some work experience. Now, it's probably gonna be really difficult to actually get any work experience in a hospital, in a GP, in a dentist because of COVID restrictions still in those locations. But what I've been recommending to people is all of those vocations, what they have in common is you want to help people. You'll be working with a range of people from a range of different backgrounds. So you need to show that you are able to have patience, listen to people and work with anyone. So you could still volunteer at different charities one thing that I think could be really beneficial is volunteering at a food bank because they need the help and also you'll gain a whole range of skills, develop your skills as well, which would be amazing for any of those vocations. So don't forget, you can actually do things like that if you can't get into a hospital itself and get that clinical work experience. Now, if you do need to do a UCAT or any other entrance exam for other courses, do it in the summer definitely book it for late August and then you can use some of the summer to revise, practice, test yourself and get ready for that. So definitely do that. Same thing with driving tests. If you are actually 17 already, then use the summer for driving lessons, driving tests, so it doesn't eat into your A-level revision time because it really does eat into it. And then the final recommendation is extra reading. So if there are any books you've been looking at that you think, oh, I'd really like to read that to help with um, any potential interviews that you might have for university or writing a personal statement, now's the time. While you don't have your A-levels to be working on, you can use this time, read a few books or articles so that you could talk about those in an interview. If you do want some recommendations of good science-based and mainly biology-based books, I'll list a load here, which are from the Oxford reading list that they recommend that anyone applying for biology has read at least one before they apply. So that's a good list to have a look at. So that is it. Those are my four top tips. Five if you include the rest and have fun as well. So hopefully that helps you to start thinking about how you can use these six weeks coming up to prepare for year 13 so you can have a really, really good start and you feel ready and sorted. If you've got any other suggestions, then put them in the comments below. Also, if you haven't noticed already, yes, I have got some merch now for a limited time only due to popular demand from year 13s. You can probably see it along the bar at the bottom because it's available, you can click on it through YouTube or it's linked in my Instagram and TikTok bio. This is the t-shirt that I've got, which I love. It's in your DNA, Miss Estric Biology. Check out my next video where you'll see me in the hoodie as well. But for now, bye everyone.